If a little green is good, more is even better. Now, back to Green is Good with John Shigarian and Mike Brady. Welcome back to Green is Good, and we are so honored and privileged again to go across the oceans today and bring on our guest, Frederick Benheim from Paris, France. And Frederick runs an amazing network of green entrepreneurs over in France, and uh, he's a very young man, and he's doing great things for the Green Revolution. Welcome to Green is Good, Frederick Benheim. Hi. Hello there. I'm very excited to be here. Hey, Frederick, so I don't mess it up because my French is really not that good, even though some of my family members actually did come through to the United States for, through France. Can you please share with our listeners the name of your great organization? Sure. So it's Entreprendre Vert. That's, that's with the French accent, and otherwise you can call it Entreprendre Vert. Got it. And for all our listeners out there who have an iPad or an uh, or have your laptop open or your desktop, you're in front of your desktop while you're listening to this show, www.entreprendrevert.org. And we'll give that later on. And of course, that that great website will be posted to all our links and everything when we when we uh, when we air the show. So, uh, Frederick, again, welcome. And you are 27 years old, and you're running this network of green entrepreneurs. How did you even get started doing this? You're so young, and why did you do this, and how did you get involved with this whole green business movement? Well, you know, it, I used to be, when I was a kid, I used to go home and inform my parents on, you know, how many football fields of forest were going up in flames, and I was, a bunch, I, I was, I was quite the eco-nerd as a kid already, and uh, <laughs> I, I, I got involved in the green movement when I was in my teens, and I went to Africa when I was 18, and I participated in a documentary in organic food and agriculture when I was 15. And, um, you know, when I was 18, I took poli-sci and went to college and started studying poli-sci, political science. Wow. And um, being involved in the green movement, you know, th- I saw this whole green business movement, you know, start to pick up. And my parents were entrepreneurs, and to me, entrepreneurship meant you're not going to see mom and dad. So I had a, a terrible image of entrepreneurship. And when we started out with uh, Entreprendre Vert in 2005, that was five years ago, I was 22 and um, wow. I was still a student. And I was actually the only student in the executive committee, not to say the only student at all, but <laughs> I was really passionate about inventing new business models that I thought could save the world, basically. Got it. Got it. And so, you know, 22 years old, who were your co-founders and why then was the idea to start this Green Entrepreneur Network? What did you, you know, what did you, what was your vision then and how has it evolved over the five years? Our co-founders were a bunch of amazing people, including um, Andre Bushman, who uh, uh, is a really historic figure in, 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 in the green movement here in France and who's been involved in um, in the green movement since the 70s, Daniel Nache, who founded the first green magazine in France back in the 80s. Other people, such as Arnaud Berger, who was this uh, amazing guy who's, who started the sustainable banking movement here in France. Uh, that's just to name a few of them. Ben Kramer, journalist, uh, specialist, of, you know, an energy spe- specialist who's been um, a very, very uh, famous journalist here in France in the green movement. And, uh, and I know other entrepreneurs and people who were involved in the business movement. And the idea was that at the time, the green movement, you know, was coming out of the 70s and the, and the 80s and the, and, and the 90s with a lot of struggling and a very, a very militant, very activist approach. Right. And, um, and at the same time, there was, this, there, was this, there was this spark, this green spark in the business world that was picking up, and a lot of people were leaving their jobs to start new ventures and start creating green companies, and, and the movement was spreading to, to the economy and to, basically to, to the business world. And there was a need to reach out and make these people work together, and uh, that was the idea of Entrepreneur Vert. The idea was to, to, to build a bridge between the green and the business world and also to bring all people who are trying to you know, build a different kind of business model and a different kind of business and a different kind of world, basically, but with economic tools to bring these people together. Got it. And how has it evolved? How many members have, have joined over the last five years? And where are you today in, in the evolution of your great organization? In the last five years, we've had you know, several hundred people come over. We've got about 250 members. 
And beyond that, we've got dozens of people at all our event, all our events that we organize in Paris and cities and other cities in in you know um, in France monthly. We address several thousand um, entrepreneurs and green professionals throughout France, and and through them and through other networks, uh, we're talking to basically the the whole sort of green entrepreneur world here in France, which is which is a pretty big a pretty big base. It's been pretty successful in terms of becoming the green entrepreneurs network and the green entrepreneurs reference. What are typically the benefits for the members when you're sitting with a a, a potential uh, uh, member and you're having a, a cup of coffee or tea or something? What are the benefits for the members? Are they tangible, intangible, and 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 uh, and, and explain that to our listeners, please. They are tangible. We bring um, actual assistance to our members either through lobbying some of their needs and some of their their concerns, which we've done for, for the wood industry, for instance, in eastern France. Uh, we're also, um, we also help our members through services. We help our members figure out how to work with their accounting, with their marketing, with their, uh, how, how, to, how to raise money, go out and, and, and raise money for their businesses. And we do all this by bringing all these professionals together who have all this knowledge and basically offering all this knowledge to our members and saying, well, if you need, you know, information, if you need, um, if you need uh, extra advice, extra training on either this or that issue, we can help. And that's what we do because we're a not-for-profit organization. So our only interest is to help our members. So we have a series of programs. One of them is a, is a training program that's very successful and very, uh, very popular through which our members can get training on whatever whatever they need, whatever their business needs are, and whatever they do not feel um, fully good at or fully knowledgeable about. I got it. And I see here, you know, one of your main goals and mission purposes is to promote a greener, more sustainable economy through entrepreneurship. Exactly. And you know, right now there's a lot of there's a lot of talk of sustainability and there are a lot of things going on. There are, Countless events, fairs, um, you know, you name it, conferences. There's a, so our focus now is to be as hands-on as possible for our members. Got it. And, and to help those who want to go out and create new businesses and new ventures and new green, you know, startups as much as possible. I love it. And, and you know, okay, so let's go do a couple of things. I want to step back for a second and then step forward again. When you and your great uh, co-founders founded this organization, did you model it off of another paradigm in, in local, in other countries that are local in Europe? Uh, did, or did you just create this from scratch and just make it up as you went? Well, absolutely. That's a great question because we modeled ourselves on their, our German counterparts. There was an organization in Germany called Unternehmensgrün. Um, now, I know you took German, so you're going to know that one. Unternehmensgrün, and, um, yeah. <laughs> This organization has been around since the 90s, and they bring together uh, entrepreneurs who are involved in, you know, who are involved in the green movement, green-minded entrepreneurs, and uh, they have a similar approach to ours. Got it. And so, when, no, so now in the real world, bringing green entrepreneurs together to achieve the common goals, how does this work, Frederick? Has it been what you wanted? Has it been collaborative? Have you been able to get them to share best practices so they can move their ventures forward faster and more efficiently and avoid more mistakes? Has this worked well? It's been working really well. And, uh, you know, I, as I said, to me, entrepreneurship a few years back meant you know, I'm not going to see mom and dad. I mean, that's what it was to me as a kid. And basically, I've been learning so much, including myself. You know, I, just every single time I go to one of our events, I learn a tremendous amount. And I know it's been the same for everyone else. Uh, there are people who have started businesses, found jobs, uh, you know, signed contracts, thanks to Entrepreneur Vera and our organization. And that's what we're most proud of. That is great, you know. And I know, you know, you, your your breadth of knowledge and interests and concerns go way beyond, um, you know, just uh, business and entrepreneurship. Talk a little bit about what you see today, because you're 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 getting to meet so many people, and you get a, such a great cross section of the business world in France and also the sustainability world. What are some of the main issues today for the greener economy? How do you see them merging together? How can people be tree huggers and capitalists at the same time? I think when you're in a company and you want to make a change, you can make it no matter where you are. 
and that's our message. We talk to people who are in all fields, and we're not we're not just addressing people who are in you know what you could call the green economy or green the green field or okay. even clean tech industries. We're talking to everybody, right. you know, including some of those industries that used to be the uh, you know uh, quote unquote enemies of the green movement. We want to talk to everyone, and what I see now is that the major opportunity is making your business and your field green, no matter what it is. Now, you know, that's one point. But beyond that point, I think in the world right now, there's, you know, obviously the issue of climate change and smart grids and, you know, changing our whole energy system. Uh, I think biodiversity is a major, major, major opportunity for businesses worldwide and for entrepreneurs. And I also think it's a really fundamental issue with which we're going to have to deal with in the coming years just as much as climate change. Gotcha. Well, that makes... And in, and in terms of when you take a global view, in terms of other global priorities, in, in, what are some of the global issues that you get to weigh in on? And do you get to travel a lot? Do you travel to other countries and be a representative from France and sit on different panels, like to the United States, and share what you're doing over there, or to London or, or other local countries? So we get to travel. I mean, I, I've traveled a lot personally. I, I've, you know, lived both in the United States and France. I was actually born in the United States and moved to France, you know, when I was 12. I was there this summer. I was in New York with the uh, Rothschild Foundation on an amazing project, wow. which brought together brought together social entrepreneurs from France, the U.S. and uh, and the U.K. and it was at Columbia Business School, and um, I had a great time and I learned quite a lot. And um, that's typically the kind of thing that you know. Um, entrep- I've been lucky, uh, lucky enough to do with Entrepreneur Vert as well as meet people, you know, all over the world. So when I was in New York, I met quite a few green entrepreneurs that, you know, I was really, that really impressed me quite a bit. That is great. You know, we're we're on we're 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 so lucky, Mike and I, right now, to have on the line with us Frederick Benheim, who runs one of the premier green entrepreneur organizations in the world. And I'm not great at French, so I'm going to spell it for all all of our listeners out there: www.entreprendrevert. Org. Of course, that's going to be posted on our website and on the Clear Channel websites all around. And, and Frederick, uh, so you've traveled and you get to share best practices and things of that such. Talk a little bit about what you're working on in Nagoya and biodiversity and the international conference that's coming up over there. Speak a little bit to that. So we're working on, uh, you know, thinking about our, our main um, activity at the moment in terms of biodiversity is trying to figure out what kind of opportunities um, entrepreneurs will be able to go out and get uh, in the coming years in terms of biodiversity. And we know that there are tons. And we think that at the moment, biodiversity is being addressed in terms of risk, but maybe not um, quite as much as we would like in terms of opportunities and actually creating value. And um, we're working on on, on on a position paper at the moment on that topic. And uh, we're very, very, very uh, looking very closely at what's going on in Japan at the moment, uh, you know, at that biodiversity conference. Can you step back, though, and explain to our listeners what is biodiversity and what is the importance of it for us now and in the coming years? So biodiversity is the diversity of all the living species all the, uh, in the world. And the issue we're facing right now is that we're basically, you know, creating or causing the most massive extinction since, you know, since the dinosaurs. And the problem is, you know, this may seem like um, it's just about cute animals, but fundamentally it's actually posing a very grave danger to our agriculture, to our um, fundamental models, and even to the climate. Um, So we have to figure out how to save biodiversity, and I'm talking about everything from germs to the panda, if we want to make our own living model on Earth, and if we want to make life on Earth for human beings uh, sustainable. Now, this is a huge danger, but it's also a huge opportunity, so I think there's a lot that can be done. When is that international conference in Nagoya? 
It's been going on in the last few days. Gotcha, gotcha. And and, and let's now, when you say biodiversity is, a, is, a, is an opportunity, you get to see lots of very fascinating business plans and, and many great green entrepreneurs or aspiring uh, eco-nerds that want to become uh, ecopreneurs. What are some of the great opportunities out there? For our listeners now, we have a lot of college listeners across the United States. We have a lot of young people who say, hey, I really want to change careers. This is not for me what I'm doing today. I really want to become part of the solution and part of the green revolution. What are some great words of wisdom, given that you've seen a lot already at your, uh, from where you sit and where you stand? What are some of the great opportunities for the budding ecopreneurs out there for them to get involved and become part of the green revolution and also the new green economy? Well, I think um, if you want to be part of the green revolution, you have to be very honest with yourself and look at what you're really passionate about. And it doesn't have to be windmills. It can be making, you know, just creating a green hotel, the first green hotel in your town. It can be starting up that green taxi company that nobody's thought about where you are. It can be um, a restaurant. It can be anything, basically. Got it. I think it's, it's a matter of being really passionate about one kind of business and going out there and creating that business, but doing it with a green mind and a green, uh, uh, and a green vision. And, um, and then, of course, you can, if you're really interested in you know, energy, biodiversity, uh, you name it, you can go out there and create uh, startups in, in those fields. But I think being a member and being a part of the green revolution is open to everyone. That's interesting. You know, it's, it's my impression when I've traveled through Europe, uh, compared to the United States, Europe and France and other great parts of, uh, you know, Europe, uh, the U.K., Germany, of course, are, are way ahead of us, seven to ten years ahead of us with regards to the Green Revolution. Is that your feeling also? And how is that situation evolving? Are you going to continue to be the leader? Is the United States and Asia catching up? How does that, how does that look and feel to you, Frederick? Well, as far as the Green Revolution is concerned, I think, um, you know, participating is really what it's all about. And as far as I'm concerned, you know, if everybody could be the leader, I'd be really happy about it. Um, so I think Europe definitely has, you know, been working on these issues uh, for a long time now. I think it's very contrasted from one country to another. And I think um, it isn't as obvious as it may seem. Some countries are very good. Um, when it comes to energy, others will be better when it comes to recycling. Um, some countries are very good at renewables, but not quite as good um, on other issues. So it really goes by issue, and um, I think emulation and you know and and and, and um, every country's endeavors are basically going to help out the global the global solution. I think is the more we have. The more, we have so, the more we have solutions coming from as many countries as possible, the better it's going to be. Now, I know there's a lot going on in China. I know there's a lot going on in the U.S. Do you know how many electric scooters there are in China at the moment? I don't know. Tell us. Tell our listeners. 60 million. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. So this is going on worldwide, and I think we should really be aware of that and uh, pay attention to what's going on everywhere else in the world. So look for solutions and good ideas and I think that's one of the most promising, um, you know, prospects of the Green Revolution, that we can all invent new things. And with this age of technology and information, we can share those solutions within minutes throughout the world. And I think that's a wonderful, 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 you know, source for hope in the coming decades. Where does France fit in, in terms of, if you were to say, leadership, followers in Europe, out of the European Union, out of the EU, where does France fit in, leader, follower? It depends. <laughs> okay. I'd say it's a leader on certain issues and it's a follower on other issues. I think Germany has been leading the way in terms of sustainable energy, and other countries joined in. You know, Portugal joined in in a matter of three or four years. It's become a leader. Uh, Spain um, is a leader in terms of solar so and, and wind energy. So, you know, it, it's all about will and not just political will. It's all, it's all about how many people just jump in and, and participate and make it, make it work and make it change. And I think you can become a leader in, in a very limited, um, you know, in a very limited amount of time. It's just about how much energy and, and, and intelligence you put into it. Got it. I think that's a, that's a great point. Have you been over to Asia yet yourself? 
Uh, I've never been to Asia. I would love to go. That's one of your next stops, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> so talk about the Green Entrepreneur Experience. So a young man or young woman calls you tomorrow or emails you tomorrow, and they have this great new uh, energy idea or great new... Happens all the time. ...water idea. <laughs> okay, great. I mean, and that's what's fascinating to Mike and I and our listeners here in the U.S. How hard is it? What are some of the unique challenges that for European green entrepreneurs that potentially aren't challenges for the green entrepreneurs here in, in the U.S. and Asia? Well, you know, the system here is very regulated and uh, for, better, for better or worse, you know, you've got a great social system here in Europe and that's, that's absolutely wonderful. But at the same time... Um, um, many entrepreneurs feel that uh, the system is a lot more regulated here in, in, in Europe than it is in the United States, and this involves, um, you know, different, different issues, and sometimes it's more complicated to deal with all this regulation. So that's one point. And then it's not always as easy to go out and raise money uh, in France as it is in the U.S. You know, I know people who went out and created companies in the U.S., and they found money very easily. Oh. And uh, this may surprise you, but... Uh, it's not as easy to find money in France, and you don't find as much money as you would in the U.S. That One is... of the reasons for that is that, you know, it's a small market, and uh, European markets are small markets, and although they are integrating and, you know, sort of um, joining in through the European Union, it does take time, and it's not like the U.S. where, there are, where there's this huge market, and you can actually reach out to that market right away. So that's one big difference I see between uh, Europe and France, and uh, Europe and the U.S. Now, there's another point. Um, I think when you start a green company, obviously you're starting a green company, but you're also starting a company. So some of the difficulties you're facing are the same difficulties as entrepreneurs in, you know, any field. And that's why at Entrepreneur Vera we're very, um, you know, adamant about making things as easy as, pop- as possible and helping out in those crucial, very critical early stages of entrepreneurship when you're actually creating the company because we want to make sure as many of our members as possible succeed and are able to fulfill, fulfill their dreams. Um, well, you know, that, that is interesting. So when, when, when an entrepreneur or ecopreneur has a great business concept, where do they go? I know here in the United States they go to Silicon Valley, to the venture capital people. They could go to Wall Street, to the private equity or the hedge funds. Where do they go in Europe? Do they go to private angel investors, or how does that really work? Well, it depends. You know, they, they tend to go to private angel investors. Uh, they also go to banks. Oh, a lot okay. more than they would in the U.S. Oh, okay. Um, but basically, it's not as easy to find that money. So there, there are government agencies. There, are, you know, there are state, gov- state-funded um, mechanisms which allow you to actually raise money. Governments are very, very involved in the economy here. But you know, overall, uh, it's not as easy. And then you don't have those those hot spots like the Silicon Valley. Uh. Um, so people are scattered all over the all over the country, and that's a good point because it also means green entrepreneurship is going on everywhere. But it all, it, you know, it, it has that it has that um, it has that inconvenient aspect that basically you're not in one of those bubbling atmospheres like the Silicon Valley, even in a place like Paris. Gotcha. Well, you know, it it sounds also too, Frederick. If, if I heard you correctly, that even though it is it is still difficult to get private financing from banks, it sounded as though it uh, the banks in Europe or France in particular might be a little more willing to uh, step out and help an entrepreneur than uh, they would be here in the United States. Is is that a fair fair statement? Uh, I think it is. A lot of banks have developed green investment projects and green investment uh, funds, and um, and there are a lot of investors that are looking to green investments nowadays. Uh, now, it's very concentrated um, on energy, for instance. Energy is one, is one of the main, you know, focuses of, of green investment. But when you're outside of those, you know, sort of established fields like energy, and you're creating a whole new concept, but you're a part of the green revolution, it's not as easy. So I think um, there's a more established Green revolution. There's a more established green economy nowadays, and right. energy is definitely clean tech is definitely at the heart of that. But I also think that there's there's still a need for for um, 
for pioneering, and we need to, we need to support those pioneers, and we have we need to find ways to support those pioneers. You're so right. You know, we're down to the last thirty seconds, unfortunately, Frederick. And can you, do you have any last words for our listeners to uh, further inspire them and give them hope, like you've done on this whole show? You've been amazing, and we're so thankful for your time today. You have any last words for our listeners before we have to sign off? I think we can all change the world, and I think everyone can do something about it. And um, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you can do something. And whatever you're able to do, whatever your, your capacity is, that's already something, and I think it's huge. I think what everyone can contribute is already huge. Well, well, Frederick, you are an amazing guest, and Mike and I think the world of you, and we need more young men like you around the world doing what you're doing. For those who want to learn more about Frederick, you could go to his website, www. E N T R E P R E N D R E V E R T dot org. That will be posted on our website, the Clear Channel websites, and obviously uh, um, all over after the show airs. Frederick Frederick Bernheim, you are an eco nerd turned eco leader <laughs> and pioneer, and you are truly living proof that green always is an good. Eco nerd. <laughs> Once an eco nerd, always an eco nerd. <laughs> This program will be available for downloading in a couple of days from our station's website, Keyword Podcast. Thanks for listening, and join us again next week at the same time for another edition of Green is Good.